As winter approaches in northern Europe, thousands of storks and cranes set off on their annual migration to Africa. Their arduous journey will take them 2,000 miles across Europe, from its northern tip to its most southern point. It's a journey over our continent that they must make to survive. But they will find few places to rest. The land below them has become a sea of industrial and urban development. For humans in 1993, the barriers to travel in Europe are coming down. For birds, the voyage has never been so hard. It's not only the birds that have suffered. The Alps are the most threatened mountain environment in the world. Europe's naturally wooded riverbanks have largely been destroyed forcing the otter and the beaver back to the very margins of Europe. Motorways give cars the freedom to speed across the continent, but badgers pay the price. Bats have been driven out of caves and old buildings, and the wolf has almost disappeared from Europe. The beautiful coasts of the Mediterranean are now long lines of tourist hotels pushing the monk seal close to extinction. Less than 300 remain. In the new Europe, even the smallest creatures must be free to escape man's relentless advance. It is our responsibility to work together for a Europe in which every species can move freely across the continent. Econet the European Ecological Network of Natural and Semi-Natural Areas joined by migratory corridors offers us that vision. A vision in which wildlife species are as free as humans to move between the islands of Europe. This film looks at three countries in which the vision of Econet is becoming a reality. Holland, Spain and the Czech Republic. While some birds migrate along the West Atlantic coast, Others turn east, towards Istanbul and Africa. They will pass over the Czech Republic, where industry and agriculture have taken a heavy toll on the environment. During the last 50 years, Forests have been cleared and hedgerows ploughed up for agriculture, making it impossible for small animals to travel from one woodland to another. Today, near Brno, the fields are a barren landscape in which no bird sings. After unification of fields into great blocks, the life changed very much. This landscape changed into something like desert with the same natural processes as, for example, erosion, and also conditions for native, native birds and native animals disappeared. But now restoration work has begun. Landscape features such as hedgerows are being replanted to form a corridor connecting two reserves. Farmers are working together to maintain the corridor as they realize the benefits. Erosion is coming under control and wildlife is beginning to return. One small step towards building a European ecological network. You cannot have only a great highways. You need also a small villages roads. And this biocorridors will be really part of this European network because his good function will support these great highways on a regional and over regional and continental level. Birds have never respected national boundaries. The birds that fly over Eastern Europe come to Istanbul, where they cross the Bosporus into Asia. Those that fly west come to the North Sea. 
Their first haven is the Wadden Sea, the continent's largest wetland stretching across the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark. Every year, hundreds of thousands of waders stop off at these rich feeding grounds. But the Wadden Sea is an island in a sea of human development. If Econet is to succeed, it must not only protect these core areas, but help to generate new reserves. The Oost Vardesplassen was once part of the Zouder Zee. In 1968, it was drained and left undeveloped. But within a short period, a rich new ecosystem began to develop. For the cormorant and the spoonbill, it is now one of the most important sites in Europe. And the great white egret has returned to breed in the Netherlands after an absence of centuries. Simply setting aside this area of land helped to create a reserve of vital importance to the European ecological network. The Netherlands is the most densely populated country in Europe but careful planning can allow every species to find a place. Coastal dunes extend from France to Denmark. Wetlands, forest and heath all form part of the Dutch ecological network. These sites must be linked by corridors if species are to be free to travel. These corridors can take many forms, Deer, wild boar and cars can coexist with the help of a grassed bridge. Badgers travel the full length of their territory along hedgerows, but motorways can block their routes. Man-made tunnels allow them to cross. Even railway lines can help some species to travel. Ragwort has made its way from Austria to the Netherlands beside the railway track. Econet must operate not only at national, but also at European level. The rivers of Europe provide a network of routes across the continent, allowing salmon to travel to their spawning grounds a thousand miles upstream. The Great River Rhine rises in the Alps and crosses four national boundaries before it enters the Netherlands. Here the river has been so tamed and straightened, the birds have few places to rest. But at Blauer Kammer near Arnhem, the dikes have been broken, helping the river to return to a more natural habitat. Willow and poplar trees grow again, providing resting places for migratory birds, and Connick's horses graze the area, maintaining it as an open space. Birds have already begun to roost, and in the future, it may again become a home for the black stork, not seen in northwest Europe for many years. Als het een geïsoleerde spot blijft, natuurlijk niet, maar uh, want de blauwe kamer is één vierkante kilometer groot, maar het is een begin van een grote uh, herstelactie van de natuur van de grote rivieren en de natuur van de Nederrijn. En door het starten van dit soort projecten wordt herintroductie van soorten die hier thuis horen. De edelhert, de steur, de zeearend, de eland of de bever, wordt, uh, komt binnen handbereik. Whereas the Dutch and Czech environments are in need of restoration, on the steppes of Spain, traditional farming and wildlife still live side by side. The Spanish steppes are some of the last in Europe. The rest have been converted to intensive agriculture. The steppes are the home of many threatened European species, now only found in Spain. Most of the world's population of great bustards live here. The pintail grouse, 
and Fecler's Lark find one of their last havens on the Spanish steppes. But these species could disappear as a result of development projects supported by the European community. The EC-funded Monegros irrigation scheme may promise a sound income for Spanish farmers, but irrigation will cause the water table to rise, changing the steppe habitat forever. Salt will make the land infertile, forcing many people to abandon their homes. Spain's traditional agricultural system has always helped to support wildlife. Every winter, farmers herd their sheep 300 miles from the snowy Pyrenees to fresher pastures further south in the Bardenas Reales. They travel along the Cañadas, ancient paths over 70 meters wide that cross the length and breadth of the Iberian Peninsula. The Cañadas link together the main mountain ranges, providing corridors for species to migrate. The sheep carry plant seeds with them, helping to disperse a wide range of grasses. And vultures feed from the animals that inevitably die along the way. Es un día super tradicional de de muchas décadas, de muchos años, muy muy hace muchos años que que baja el ganado de la montaña a comer las hierbas de la bardena. Y eso es es tradición, es muy antigua. Every year, 50,000 sheep enter the mountain plain. Farming families take the chance to celebrate the end of their long journey. The Cañadas provide the basis for a network of corridors, joining Spain's most important ecological areas. If farmers were offered financial incentives to carry on their traditional practices, the network would be protected. But current development practice will have to change. It's an authentic contradiction and an authentic pain that the last zones planas eh, horizontales bien conservadas con vegetación esteparia estén desapareciendo por una a lo mejor mala, mala planificación o mala interpretación o poco control de una subvención eh, de la comunidad económica europea que al mismo tiempo está poniendo dinero para conservar otros otras zonas esteparias similares a esta como es el caso del planero que hemos visto anteriormente. Europe's wildlife areas are under threat. We must act now if we are to protect them. Each day's delay will see further irreversible losses in the natural heritage of Europe. Econet will provide the framework for concrete measures to protect, restore and develop ecosystems of European importance. It is a challenge that will call for unprecedented European cooperation. It is a challenge we will have to meet. <laughs>